Hello beer nerds! Today we're going to talk about CO2. Woohoo! Frosty! Ho ho ho, that gets cold. If you want to know the quick answer, here it is. Now, if you want to know what those numbers actually mean, stick around. Because we're starting a series all about CO2. Now keep in mind, when I talk about these numbers, it's about serving this beer, not force carbonating this beer. So it's, these numbers are based on the assumption that the beer in here has already been carbonated at the brewery. If you're making your own beer and you're force carbonating it, the numbers are gonna be about one third what I'm gonna show you. When talking about carbonation, there's two main factors. There's temperature and there's time. When you first get your keg from the brewery, assuming it's filled right up to the top, at 12 PSI, all you're going to want is about three PSI to gently push the beer out of the keg and turn the gas off when you're not drinking it. Now, as you get down to say this much beer left in the keg, you have to have this entire area of the keg also at 12 PSI in order for this last little drop of beer to be at 12 PSI. Now, if you're trying to do it with this, that's a bad idea. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. So over time, you're probably just gonna let your beer go a little flatter, a little flatter, because it's only a small keg, so you'll drink it within a couple days anyway. Now, if you do wanna keep it long-term storage, you're gonna to have to move out of this and into these larger tanks. So it's all about which is the best size for you, for portability, or for long-term storage, say if you want to start filling your own tanks, or filling your own CO2 or soda stream canisters, stuff like that, but we're gonna get into all that. For the sake of this comparison, we're gonna use a five liter keg. The reason we're gonna use a five liter keg is because one of these 16 gram cylinders is the perfect amount to drain one of these five liter kegs. So, a single 16 gram cylinder is gonna cost you about $1.80 to drain this tank. If you buy them in a five or a 10 or a 30, the price gets down to about $1.40. Now, of course, these are perfect for portability. You just snap it on and off you go to the campground or to your buddy's house for a dinner party and this will drain this whole thing. Now keep in mind, with these mini tanks, there's no flow control. So you're gonna to wanna to keep the gas off, the pressure released, and when you go to pour, open, let out the gas, get your pour, turn the gas back off, and then turn off the tap. Because you're not trying to maintain carbonation with this, you're just trying to serve the beer. So you wanna just gently push it out at about three PSI. I know I sound like a broken record saying this, but it's very important. <laughs> These are the three adapters that we sell the most of. This one is stainless steel, has a little rubber thing in there, and it's got the pin for pushing down on a soda stream. It fits that proprietary thread. This one is aluminum. You can see the inside there, but you can also see the side walls. I'll show a picture of that. Because this thread here is actually the same as this thread here. So you can get these mixed up in terms of thread. However, in the CGA 320, you can see that there's no sidewall and there's no little hole in the bottom. Also, it comes with a washer because it seals up against that washer. The paintball canister has that little hole there you can see and it's got a little sidewall because the paintball seals on the side. So when you put that on, you can feel it go up against that sidewall and really if you just bring it past there, it's gonna be sealed. That's when you, you can feel the pin get hit and you'll hear a little tss. This five pound canister has a CGA 320 thread. You're gonna use the washer to seal up against. That goes on there. What is the purpose of this adapter? Well, it has the same thread as this little cartridge. So instead of using that with the regulator, you can spin the regulator onto there now, or here, or here. And then you can use the large tank. So what this allows you to do is switch between portable mode and long-term storage mode. And then you just spin the tank 
right on there. Give it a little extra twist. And then you get a pressurized tank. And then depending on the situation, you can snap on the tap or you could have that stuffed in the back of your fridge or in a cooler or whatever, and just run a, a picnic hose. And this actually has a bit of flow restriction, so that's nice. So there are the four main methods for serving these kegs. Now let's look at the cost comparison. Now here we have the soda stream canister. They're a pretty good option, but you don't really save much money over the 16 gram cylinders, especially if you buy them in a 30 pack. Also with soda stream, some are refillable, some are not. So you never really own the canister, you're always just sort of renting it. Now these soda stream canisters hold 14.5 fluid ounces of CO2. So that'll allow you to serve this five liter keg about 16 times. So that works out to about $1.25 per keg. Now that brings us to one of my favorite options because I'm in the portable beer business, the paintball canister. It comes in a 12 ounce or a 24 ounce. So depending on the size of the cooler that you want to fit this in or a backpack, or if you just want to carry it around, have it set on the picnic table. Generally, they're about 50 cents an ounce to fill. So the 12 ounce is going to cost $6. The 24 ounce is going to cost $12. So let's break this down a little bit. The soda stream, you pay $20 up front core charge and then $20 a fill. These little paintball canisters, they're generally going to cost you $30, but you own the tank then. You're not renting it. So it's $10 more for that, but then the first fill is only $6, so already you're just basically making your money back. The 24 ounce is gonna be about $40 for the canister, and then $12 per fill. I mean, really the best thing to have is both adapters because if you're out someplace where you can't find refills for this as easily, I mean, you can find these anywhere, Bed Bath, Walmart, Canadian Tire. So in a pinch, pay the little extra, get your soda stream, keep the beer flowing. But if you're around a paintball shop, plus I have a list on my website of all the places you can fill these, uh, then go with your cheaper option. So now personally, I prefer the 24 ounce because it fits nicely in my fridge and my cooler and why not have more gas at once? So let's look at the price comparison of this compared to the soda stream. So this 24 ounce canister can serve about 150 liters of beer. That'll serve this keg 30 times compared to 16 with the soda stream canister. So that's gonna bring you to about 40 cents to drain this tank, same price for the 12. So now let's look at our full size tanks. These have a thread called a CGA 320. You got a five pound, a 10 pound, and a 25 pound tank. This tank is gonna serve, not force carbonated, but serve 600 liters. This one's gonna be double at 1200 and the 25 at 3000 liters. Now with these canisters, of course, like many things, the more you buy it once, the cheaper it gets because it's not just about the cost of the CO2, it's about the hassle of getting the CO2 in there. You have to chill them, you have to hook it up to the scales and everything else like that. That's, that'll be in a different video. The typical price to fill these, $40 for this one, $50 for this one, $60 for this one. So you can see immediately a substantial savings go big, go home, right? But at this point, you're really getting into a matter of portability and what suits your lifestyle. You could put this one inside a small kegerator fridge if you don't wanna drill a hole through your fridge. If you don't mind drilling a hole through your fridge, you go with a big one like this. Or maybe you're in a household that drinks a lot of soda water. So there's multiple purposes for this. We got ability to hook this up to a soda stream machine or refill soda stream canisters. So it really depends on your lifestyle. So now this one is not much cheaper than filling the paintball canister. The paintball canister will drain this tank for 40 cents. This one's gonna be about 33 cents. So is it worth the loss of portability? That depends on you. But you do have a lot more CO2 on hand. So even though it's not a huge price difference, with this one, you could only drain 30 tanks. With this one, you can do 120 tanks. But then you also have the initial cost of the tanks. Now, we don't actually sell these size tanks because can kegs all about portable beer. I think generally it's gonna cost you about 100 up to about 140. You'll have to check the prices that change. So there's a lot more initial cost. So the question is, how much CO2 are you gonna be using? Now the 10 pound tank, you can do 240 liters of beer. Now that's pretty good, but this one will drain this tank 600 times, each time a dime. Now I know you've been looking over at this tank over here. Well, this is a 50 pound tank, double this one. But this one's special that it has a dip tube in it. So you 
simple, pure liquid CO2. So you can't use a tank like this for serving beer. What we have this tank for is for filling these paintball canisters. Now at this cost, it's gonna cost you about 0.8 cents to drain that tank, so less than a penny. But this is a real lifestyle choice. And you've got 9,000 bottles of beer that you can serve with this over here. Now, I don't know how much beer you drink, and I'm always on 9,000 bottles of beer is pretty good. So you go to the brewery, get your five liter keg filled properly with a new direct fill system in a different video. What's it gonna cost you to drink it? Now well, these, depending on how many you buy, it's gonna be $1.80 to $1.40. The soda stream is gonna be $1.25. The paintball canister is gonna be 40 cents. Get into here, you're looking at 33 cents. Into here, 21 cents. Over here, 10 cents. And the big boy over there, it's gonna bring it all the way down to 0 0.8 cents, less than a penny. Well, I think we should just start editing.